I haven't been able to make ABS meetings for some time now because of fieldwork overlap or parenting stuff. So I'm excited it's online this year and I can join y'all again. So I study parasites that manipulate the behavior of their hosts. This involves the parasite making the host do something that is bad for the host, but good for the parasite. The kinds of parasites I study are called parasitoids, which is a kind of parasite that kills its host as it completes its life cycle. I'm going to tell you about four papers that I wrote with these amazing collaborators, Scott Egan, Andrew Forbes, and Anna Ward. And we couldn't have done this without the help of these folks and these funding sources. And I'd like to acknowledge the amazing artwork by French cartoonist Boulet, which you'll see throughout this presentation. So, in the southeastern United States, you'll find these beautiful live oaks. These oaks are infected by gall wasps, which complete part of their lives within the oak's stems, leaves, catkins, and roots. One of the wasps is Bassettia pallida, the crypt gall wasp. Mom wasps lay their eggs inside the stems of live oaks, and the stem is then manipulated into creating a compartment called a gall in which the baby wasp will undergo development until it becomes an adult. In this species, the gall is called a crypt, which is a totally awesome name. In the bottom photo, I used a razor blade to remove the top layer of bark and woody tissue, and you see what two crypts containing subadult gall wasps looks like. When a wasp is done and ready to leave the crypt, they use their mouth parts to excavate an emergence hole, which they exit from and go off to complete the next phase of their life cycle. Crypts and other galls are meant to protect developing wasps from natural enemies like parasitoids, but nature finds a way, and these are three of the 19 parasitoid species that we found associated with Bassettia pallida crypts. My favorite of the parasitoids is this one. We recently described this, this beauty, and let me tell you a bit about what she does to the gall wasp host. So, the parasitoid mom lays an egg inside of the crypt while the gall wasp is developing. At a later point, the host is then induced to start creating an emergence hole. This emergence hole is smaller than the ones they typically make, and the host dies with, with its head plugging the hole. On the bottom right, you see an emergence hole with the head of the host peeking out. Here is one of the host wasp's eyes. The parasitoid consumes the host body and undergoes development in the crypt. When the parasitoid is done its development, it chews a hole through the host's head and emerges to go off and find a mate. Here is a gaping hole in the host's head from which the parasitoid has emerged. So we named the wasp the Crypt Keeper Wasp. And she's totally hip. In addition to being beautifully iridescent, she has these super cute little boots. But I digress. In order to say manipulation is happening, one of the things that you need to show is that the weird host behavior is benefiting the parasite. So how does the host creating an emergence hole, which it plugs with its head, benefit the parasitoid? Well, if you tape a thin piece of bark over the head of the host as it plugs an emergence hole, the Crypt Keeper Wasp is three times more likely to die trapped in the crypt relative to Crypt Keeper Wasps that only need to get through the host's head. So it seems like the Crypt Keeper Wasp is not good at excavating its own emergence holes. Perhaps its mouth parts aren't as strong as those of its host. And it needs the host to create an emergence hole for it. That's not to say that parasitoids can never get out. Here is a hole made by a Crypt Keeper Wasp that did manage to get through the bark. So Scott Egan went to the American Museum of Natural History and the Smithsonian Institution and noticed that their collections included closely related gall wasp species with their heads plugging emergence holes. This made us wonder if maybe the Crypt Keeper wasp was attacking other gall wasps in the genus Bassettia, or maybe even more distantly related gall wasps. So Anna Ward and Andrew Forbes collected more than 23,000 galls from 100 oak gall wasp species, and they found the Crypt Keeper wasp infecting six additional host species. This is the host we just finished talking about. These are two closely related wasps, and the other wasps are in more distantly related genera. So the Crypt Keeper wasp is able to both infect and manipulate a diverse group of hosts. These hosts all did the head plugging thing, this broad range of hosts suggests that the behavioral manipulation involves tinkering with some fairly conserved physiological mechanism 
for example, a hormone shared by all of these species, or involves something like very targeted debilitation of, ho of the hosts and their behavior. What does tie these seven hosts together is that they all have relatively poorly defended galls. Some galls made by other species have fuzz or spikes or other things that make it hard for the mom parasitoid to get her egg into the right spot in the gall. But all of these hosts make galls that are pretty easy to penetrate if you can find them. So maybe the host range of the Crypt Keeper wasp is limited by the extended phenotype of its host, which is to say it's limited to wasps that manipulate the oak trees into producing relatively simple and poorly defended galls. I thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to answering any questions that you have during the Q&A, or you can send me an email or contact me through Twitter. Thanks.